This is Charles Johnson, national editor of Farm Journal and top producer of magazines. Uh, I'm here outside Memphis, Tennessee at the National Cotton Council headquarters talking with Don Parker, their manager of integrated pest management. Uh, Don, uh, the boll weevil eradication program is touted as a big success across the United States and a lot of people think it's kind of winding down now. But I understand there are still some concerns about the eradication program. Would you elaborate a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, Charles, the, the, the program has been extremely successful. And whenever you think about uh, where we started out up through North Carolina and moved down through the country, um, the program has made tremendous success. Uh, however, we try to point out to everyone that the boll weevil has not completely been eradicated at this time. And until the job is completed, we don't need to get relaxed. There are areas of Texas that are still having uh, some setbacks with boll weevil eradication. They have identified some problems with the hurricane fronts moving through and actually uh, providing wind fronts that move weevils back inland to areas that were near completion or, or some areas even that had completed uh, eradication. And as well as that, they've had a lot of problems with some volunteer cotton uh, that they have taken several steps to address. Uh, the volunteer cotton comes up in some of the other crop fields and ditch banks and fence rows where seed maybe had blown or dropped the previous year. And that plant then becomes a source for boll weevil reproduction which can set back the uh, success of the eradication program. So until we complete the job, we don't need to become relaxed. So the job is not over? No, by no means. Okay, so there's still going to be guys out monitoring, still guys working on, on this eradication program for, for years to come? Uh, we, we've still got probably two years to go um, before we really complete the, the, what we believe are the initial phases in Texas right now. And uh, Mexico also has their own eradication program going, right, which kind of works hand in hand with, with ours? Mexico does, and, and they also have a pink bollworm eradication going, similar to the U.S. Um, I was fortunate last year, I had the opportunity to travel down through Mexico to meet with several of their program uh, operators to look at their program to see how successful it was and, and how uh, look at the fields to see if they were really accomplishing the things they were claiming and they, they are. They actually are. Um, they have had tremendous success down through almost to the middle of, of Mexico for the boll weevil. Uh, they do have some very severe problems once you get up about to Torreon. But as far as, as uh, that upper part, the border areas, they've had tremendous success and uh, the way that we should look at that is the further they can get the boll weevil from our border, the better off we're going to be because once we move through eradication and we enter that post-eradication phase, it will be a monitoring uh, to, to make sure that we don't get a reinfestation. And that monitoring is going to be probably more intensive around the border areas and if Mexico is successful at moving the boll weevil further south uh, than, than the border, um, that just enhances our, our safety zones. Now the eradication program here in the U.S. Uh, started in North Carolina, I believe, and spread across the belt from there over a period of years. Um, are we still, as we monitor in these original areas for the eradication program. Are we picking up any, any weevil activity there or is it pretty much eradicated there? Most of the area is uh, pretty much eradicated. There, there was a, a, for instance, in Mississippi last year, they did catch a, a weevil that uh, showed up at a casino area and they intensified their monitoring around that to make sure that it was not a reproducing population they did not find anything, so it is believed that that one possibly uh, rode in on a vehicle to the casino. But um, I guess the weevil wanted to do a little gambling himself. Yeah. Um, as we as we go up through North Carolina, all of that area still remained very uh, clean. Um, 
our areas now are just concentrated pretty much. There's a few spots that we still have in Louisiana and um, Texas. Uh, you know, we've reduced our cotton acreage uh, quite a bit in the last three years from 14 million down to under 9 million they're projecting for this year. Uh, is that reduction in acreage had any impact on the program in any way? Are we still, we're still monitoring all these acres out there? Well, the, the monitoring changes in post eradication based on the distance that the nearest population is. So the, the further the program moves through the U.S., the less intensive the trapping has to be. So the producers in those post eradication areas uh, don't have to um, have as many traps out as they did during an act of eradication. But there is continued monitoring throughout the old belt. Well, Don, sounds like there's still a good bit of work being done and still a lot of work to be done on the eradication program. So appreciate you uh, taking time out with us today. And this is Charles Johnson reporting for the editors of Farm Journal and Top Producer Magazines.